man. So Coinbase just refused to list Phantom. What is going on? Why will Coinbase not list Phantom? We've got Bitcoin up almost 3% today with a strong, powerful green candle taking us currently to 41,200. Is this a brief rally? Is there more risk to the downside? We've got Phantom now sitting up 2.2% at $1.18. Things are looking a little bit better, but should we be getting excited? Have we started our reversal? I'm going to share with you in this video exactly what is needed on Bitcoin and Phantom to achieve a reversal. So make sure you stay tuned. Hit up the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. These videos, as always, are brought to you by myself. Yes, our very own course member live streams. Check the link in the description, ejars.uk forward slash member, where we have three times weekly member live streams. We've got our next one later on today, where we talk about people's portfolios. We do technical analysis. We look at tokenomics. We look at macroeconomics and a whole lot more. But let's get straight here into what we want to look at, which is the Bitcoin chart. Because here on the Bitcoin chart, what we're seeing let me just get switched over so you guys can see that. There you go. What we can see here on the Bitcoin chart is we're managing to create a green candle. But the significance of this green candle is very important. You can see we've got the support from our yellow support line, which is drawn from a long, long time ago. And you can see 39,185 here was a support. We managed to get back into our wedge. Can we hold this? Or is this just going to be a backwards retest of the wedge before a downside? Remember when we talk about breaking out of a pattern, you'd retest and you head to the upside? On this instance, we didn't, right? We just went straight into the wedge. Will the same happen here? Will this be a successful retest for the bears? Or will we manage to get back into the wedge, start trading within this wedge and giving ourselves a chance to break to the upside? That is the key moment here for Bitcoin. But it's good that we're having a green day. Now, the question arises, why are we having a green day? Because we're also seeing Phantom up, right? Phantom creating a nice green candle here, two green days in a row here on Phantom, up 2.4% today. Are we getting a break of trend? Are we done here? Are we now bottoming out and starting to create the move to the upside? I'm going to give you the bullish scenario very shortly. But first, is it any coincidence? And the answer is no. The markets are green today. The Dow Jones up 0.5, the S&P 0.65, 1.5% on the NASDAQ as the uh, US economy starts to take things in its stride. They understood that there were some glimmer of hopes yesterday in the CPI. This morning, we got the PPI, which is your producer price index, uh, coming in as the biggest gain on record. That spooked markets a little bit, but they took it in its stride. And also, the more important thing is we have now kicked off for earnings season, okay? So now investors' attentions are going to switch across to earnings seasons and whether companies can start delivering good earnings and do they give good forecasts, more importantly. Remember, markets are not expecting really good. They're expecting quite bad earnings for Q1. Q1 was, you know, the height of the disaster, um, but is more in the forecast of what they say they're seeing on the earnings calls for Q2. So the markets will be holding their breath looking for that over the next few weeks. So don't be surprised to see the markets moving to that. And obviously, crypto is correlated, right? As we've got a green day, like I said, on Bitcoin, but look at the S&P, green candle. Look at the NASDAQ, QQQ, green candle. We're super correlated right now. And anybody who's refusing to accept that is just ignoring the data in front of them. So now we need to discuss what is going on, because if we go on to Phantom, we can see that we've had this down move for a while now. And the question now arises for those of you who are new to kind of charting and technical analysis, how do we get out of this mess, right? We're in this big mess. We've fallen all the way to the downside here. But how do we get out of this pattern? Well, it's quite clear. There's a few different technical analysis patterns which will create a bullish reversal to the upside, okay? So when you've been moving for a long time to the downside, there's these few patterns which you should be looking out for, which could suggest that the bears are losing steam and we could be ready to move to the upside. And the first one we want to share with you guys is what is called the inverse head and shoulders. Now, you guys may know from our videos, we do monitor the head and shoulders pattern quite often, but an inverse head and shoulders is just, just the flip of that. Okay, you have a left shoulder, you have a head pattern, which is the maximum strength that the balls, uh, the bears were able to achieve. Then the bears get a little bit weaker and the right shoulder isn't as low as the previous low here from the head. And then you get a move to the upside. You can also have a rounded bottom where the bears just gradually lose steam over time and the balls start to pick up some confidence before starting to move to the upside. This is called a rounding bottom. The next thing you can see is something called a double bottom. Okay, a double bottom, you come, you hit a level, you bounce, you hit it again, and you still weren't able to penetrate that level, which just goes to show that the bears were exhausted. They just couldn't push the price any lower, and the balls can go on on their merry way to reverse the pattern. 
very similar is a triple bottom same thing as the double bottom just comes and tests it three times okay so these are bottoming patterns and now you know double bottom and triple bottom are the most commons but if you you test the bottom four times five times it's the same concept right as long as you can't break that level it makes that level even stronger for you to then bounce off that level uh, going forward and then you have something like a bullish wedge. And we watch a lot of these wedge patterns here on this channel. It's just when you have a downward wedge with successive lower highs, but eventually you're able to break to the upside, then you can have a reversal pattern to the upside here. Now, let's get back to the phantom chart. And the one we can notice potentially happening is a bit of a double bottom, right? A bit of a double bottom here being formed around, you could argue, the 108, 1010 line. And if we can get that kind of a pattern here on the daily chart, that could be a good signal for us to move to the upside, something like that, creating a W pattern, a double bottom pattern, if you want to call it, and a move to the upside. So that's one thing we're looking out for here on Phantom. More importantly, we know Phantom is going to respect the wider market. And the wider market, Bitcoin, is saying uh, we've got this wedge pattern. Now, if we can break to the upside of this wedge, that would be our break of trend, right? We would have entered this wedge, this uh, ascending triangle, and we break to the upside we can move on, we have a reversal, and we can start heading to new highs. So that's what we're looking out for here. Good candle here on Bitcoin, but we just have to be cognizant. If this is just a retest, and then we head to the downside, we just have to be careful. So no chasing green candles, no buys for me on any of these levels. I'm sitting back, I'm watching. What does the market want to do? I just want to make sure my portfolio is nice and balanced. I'm only in my high conviction plays, and I'm not doing any panic selling whatsoever. If we see lower prices, I'm going to start buying the dip on some of my faves. But at this kind of point, 41,200, I'm not super excited. I'll let it have a green candle, see what happens next, and let that unfold. Now, if we take a quick look here at the fear and greed index, we can see the fear and greed index is sitting at 25. We're now back into extreme fear. Okay, so we start to roll up our sleeves. We start to have a thing. Okay, what's going on in the market? Um, naturally, if we stay at 41,000 and get a refresh of this fear and greed index tomorrow, you will see this start to climb back into the 30s. Okay, if Bitcoin falls below 40, you see this start to fall to uh, back into extreme fear. Now, Coinbase, let's talk about it. What are you doing? Let's have a look at this, guys. Increasing transparency for new asset listings. So basically, Coinbase have got this new thing where they say, we're going to increase the transparency. When we've got a new set of assets listing, we're going to give you a list of it. And they've given us an update a couple of days ago. And this is what they've given us. They are listing another 50 coins, guys. Hear this, 50 coins on Coinbase. Okay, a bunch of ERC20 tokens. I'm going to come on to these very shortly, guys. We're going to go through them. 45 ERC tokens and five SPL Solana tokens. Crazy. Now let's have a read of some of these tokens because for some reason they don't think Phantom is a good enough project for them to list. Aleph, <laughs> Arc Block, BiFi, Big Data Protocol, okay, Binance USC, fair enough. BitDAO, Botto, Chronotech, Coin98, Dap Radar, Dex Tools. I mean, are you kidding me? Then let's look at the Solana ones. Eprocop Finance, Bitspawn, Green Satoshi. To I mean, you've got to be having a laugh. What is the rationale that Coinbase is going through right now to allow coins onto their platform? They've got Shiba, but they haven't got Phantom. They haven't got Phantom, one of the best projects by Total Value Lock, one of the best DeFi plays. And this just goes to show, in this space, it still is murky waters. It isn't about how good your project is. It isn't about merit all the time. It's about who you know and what you can get done. And as you can see, Phantom isn't in those traditional circles that a Solana is in, that certain projects are able to, you know, pull levers and buttons to get things done. And you can call that a weakness, but I think that's also the underdog strength of Phantom and why the community really do rally behind them because they've really got this charm where you know they haven't had things easy and uh, they're having to earn things the hard way. And I think, you know, long run, we're going to be fine. Coinbase are going to come begging and they're going to want to list Phantom. And when that happens... Uh, Coinbase is just going to, you know, they're going to have to take the fact that they were just on it a bit late, right? They jumped, they, they missed the boat on it and they got on it late. And at that point, Phantom will be in a stronger position and no doubt they'll be able to command the listing on Coinbase. We're just going to have to wait it out. But definitely, they, they, they just refuse to list Phantom. Something is going on because this is not a joke project. This is a really serious project. When you look at these coins, definitely it's not to do with adoption. It's not to do with market cap. It's not to do with pricing. It's not to do with tokenomics. It's not to do with total value logs. Because if so, then Phantom would definitely be listed on Coinbase. Coinbase, shout out to you that I don't know what you're doing, but reach out, tell us, why are you not listing Phantom? Make a statement. Why are you not listing Phantom? Tell us, have you not been approached? Has Michael Kong not approached you? And in fact, when I have Simone Pomposi on, we will ask him that very question. I'm going to make a note here. We're going to ask him that exact question. Coinbase. And we'll find out. We'll report that back to you because we're going to be interviewing Simone Pomposi, the CMO of Phantom, next Monday. So if you have any questions you want to be asking Simone, jump into our Discord. We're going to have a channel in our Discord server 
where you can list your questions, which we're going to ask. I'll be picking out the very best questions from within there so we can get the community to ask questions to the CMO of Phantom. As always, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you appreciate this blend between technicals and fundamentals, smash up the likes. Don't forget to subscribe. If you appreciate my perspective, consider joining the course member live stream. Links in the description, jars.uk forward slash member, or jump into our Discord and speak to the community. Tag me, ask me questions about the course. We can answer them there for you. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to link up the video to the tokenomics video. Make sure you go watch that. If you haven't watched that and you're new to Phantom, you need to watch that. Even if you're not new to Phantom, you need to watch that because I outlined one of the Achilles heels, which I found in Phantom, which not a lot of people are aware about, but it's important we spread the word for the community. As always, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.